Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of my Little Pinay Nurse podcast channel. So today's episode, we're gonna talk about your colleagues at work. So I'm gonna explain a lot of different kinds of staff that you will be meeting at work and what is their purpose, basically. Like the common people that you will be meeting in, in a ward setting when you are a nurse here in the UK. The first people that you will be, and it's always there, are the healthcare assistants. They are our partners, sometimes partners in crime. So HAs are, they do a lot of stuff like emptying the catheters, helping with the wash, emptying stoma bags, um, doing tea for people, just doing everything else that a nurse can do. They can't give any medications and things like that, but they are like our assistants basically. Although even though they are our healthcare assistants, we don't rely for them to do everything we have to do things as well we have to empty the catheters as well as nurses like it's not just their responsibility it's basically a helping hand although a lot of times as well you will meet different kinds of people some people could be lazy some nurses could be lazy some healthcare assistants could be lazy as well sometimes there's like a bit of tension between nurses and um, healthcare assistants only because sometimes healthcare assistants feel like nurses are too demanding and sometimes nurses think that HAs doesn't do anything anymore things like that but basically we are both there to help each other but it's just some people are just different and there are the porters uh, porters are the ones I think in the Philippines we call them like sometimes orderly or ISW so porters do a lot of different tasks as well they push a patient's bed going to everywhere else in the area in the hospital like x-ray or they also send bloods to laboratory and things like that just the same as what they do as well in the philippines there are also the cleaners and the domestics they are there to clean the area they empty the bin or trash and things like that but one thing that you should know they don't clean human waste there was one time when a patient this was like a dementia patient and he accidentally pooped on the floor so he was like spreading his poop everywhere in the ward and the cleaner was there and he was like we're not allowed to clean human waste it will be the healthcare assistants or the nurses who will need to clean it up that's basically it that's how it goes <laughs> nurses and healthcare assistants we do all the cleaning for these people we wipe their bums if they couldn't do it on their own so yeah and then we have the kitchen staff they go there three times a day in the ward they do breakfast lunch dinner it's not just their responsibility to serve the food it will be everyone's responsibility they also do tea rounds sometimes it's like 3 p.m it's good to know that as well because in case there's a patient and he or she wants to have tea and it's like nearly 3 p.m at least you can say oh there will be tea rounds uh very soon so you can just wait for that and then there's the band six senior nurses they usually are the nurse in charge for the day uh, they are paid more when we get the pen we start as band five and we usually wear the uh, light blue colored uniform now if you get promoted to a senior staff nurse you will be band six and we have this band six senior nurses they're usually the nurse in charge during the day they usually wear this uh, darker blue like royal blue uniform and um, they are the ones who can guide you as well like if you have any questions you can always ask your colleague or the band six staff nurse because they used to know a lot more and then there's the manager your manager is sometimes called as ward sister now it gets more complicated if the manager is male because a lot of people are used to calling the manager like sister then <laughs> it's so awkward i don't know we can just call them brother <laughs> Of course, I'm kidding. But the history of that, the nuns were the nurses before, like a long time ago in England. So that's why people are used to calling nurses uh, sisters. And then, yeah, that's just basically the, the history of that. So your manager, usually they're in the office because they do a lot of managerial things. They make your schedule. If you have like study days or things like that, you talk to your manager. And then the matron is the manager of your manager so they usually handle two or more wards so whenever there are issues they text incident reports about the ward they usually are involved 
involved. They do a lot of meetings. If you are involved in a serious incident, and like a serious matter, then they will talk to you. And then the head of nursing is the manager of the matron. And head of nursing usually holds a specific division or like speciality. So there is like a head of nursing for a surgical division or oncology division. And then going up to the ladder, there's director of nursing and then there's chief nurse. And we don't touch about that anymore because we don't really talk to them that much. We don't see them as much in the ward anyway. And then we move on to the different parts of the multidisciplinary team. So we call it MDT. And this involves like doctors, pharmacists, just anyone that could be involved as well for a patient's care. First, let's talk about doctors. So first on the list are the foundation doctors. I call them the baby doctors. They're usually FY1 or FY2. They just graduated from medical school and they do two years for the foundation. That's why there is FY1 and FY2. Sometimes you will really know that they are just starting because sometimes they're not yet confident. Sometimes the nurses who guide these doctors and sometimes there is a bit of uh, tension as well from nurses and doctors just because of different plans like probably ego as well and things like that but again at the end of the day it should be like a helping working environment with each other <laughs> but it just happens you know FY1 or FY2 doctors they do rotate like every three months and the problem with that is they usually don't get like a proper orientation with everything like the usual process so whenever there is a change of doctors every three months there will be delayed discharges because some of them doesn't know how to make the discharge letters and things like that. Some of them couldn't really decide on what painkillers the patient should be having when they go home. Those are just examples. After they do their foundation years, they move up to being SHO or senior house officer. SHOs are still like junior doctors, but they're a little bit more experienced. They've been there for two years and they usually do this for two to three years, I think, being an SHO. And this is what I tell you, by the way. If you know that you are right, you can always suggest it but in a good way not in a rude way like not in a condescending way don't think like they are doctors they are always right no sometimes we have our own knowledge that other people doesn't know as well so if you know that you are right you did your research then you can always speak up and just tell them about it without being rude or condescending it's just focus on what's best for the patient and what is safe for the patient and there's registrar or we call them reg so they are above the FI1s and the FYs and the SHOs uh, so they're basically doing their speciality already so they've chosen what they want to do what they want to specialize in and they are under a consultant. What I noticed in the ward or uh, within the doctor's area, they usually have high respect for consultants. Like they are like the highest of the doctor's rank in like a usual setting. It's like in the Philippines, there are bureaucracy as well. But here, it's not a lot of bureaucracy like that. But I would really see how they look up to the consultants. They respect the consultants. That's their like boss, basically. And fun fact, we don't call the consultants doctors. They need to be called Mr. And I don't know why is that happening. I think I've read about it before and I forgot already what it was and why they are called Mr. instead of a doctor, which is kind of weird, right? Like, I would want, if I'm a doctor, I would want to be called a doctor instead of a mister. Mister is like a husband. <laughs> but anyway, that's how it is here. So whenever there's a consultant and you want to call them by their name, just make sure to call mister something. And then moving on from the doctors, we have our PT, which are the physiotherapists. Like in the wards, there, there's always a physiotherapist that usually are assigned to, especially in the orthopedic area because because there's a lot of um, movements affected in a patient whenever they have their orthopedic or bone surgeries. They usually have a list of the patients that they need to see, especially those who are going to have their surgeries. But if you have any concerns with a patient who has a mobility issue and they don't know about this patient, you can always talk to them and ask them for a review or just to see the patient if they have times just to see if they can assist and give them any walking aid and things like that before the discharge 
There's also occupational therapists or what we call OT. And they're usually there to assist the patient when they go home on what we can do to help them. There are some patients who had surgeries and they just couldn't really move a lot and they live alone so they don't have anyone. And sometimes they go home with what we call a package of care. It's just basically carers who will be going to your house in a day, twice a day, three times a day, four times a day. It depends on their assessment. Or they can also provide some other equipments that can help you. For example, like toilet seats or they can give you a commode or other equipments that can support you with your everyday life back home when you are already discharged. So PT and OT are the ones who usually collaborate as well for a safe discharge together with the nurses and the doctors and the pharmacists, which I will be talking about. So pharmacists play a big role in the ward. They they do a lot of screening for patients' prescriptions on a day-to-day basis. They also screen discharge letters, whatever the patient is going home with medications. They would check if that is safe for the patient or not. And if ever it's not, if they don't approve these medications to go home with the patient, they would talk to the doctors and tell them to change it. And that's one thing that delays the discharge. We can't really tell them when they can go home because it depends on when are the medications going to be ready for them. So yeah, pharmacists. And then there are also phlebotomists, also known as the med tech in the Philippines. And they usually go around like early in the morning to do bloods on the patient and that's their main job so it saves the nurses from collecting bloods but if it's a new order during the day sometimes it's the nurses or the doctors who does it because phlebotomists has just their own set of schedule of doing it and then there's the radiographers we already know them they do the x-rays they sometimes have their mobile x-rays they could sometimes go to the ward and do the x-ray there and then there's the dietitians so anyone who are not eating well or you think that they have have lost a lot of weight from last time there's a specific assessment for that which we call the must or must and i forgot what it means i don't do that anymore in recovery but in the ward they usually do this assessment and sometimes if there's a big gap with their weight from like three months ago then they need to be seen by the dietitians you can always make a dietitian referral depending on your trust or you can call them and just ask them for any advice like oh i have a patient she lost a lot of weight blah 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 and she's not eating very well they could usually suggest things for them they can order like a juice kind of um, supplement for them something like that they are heavily involved with patients who needs uh, total parenteral nutrition and then there's the CRT or critical response team. I don't know what the other trust call them, but they're usually the ones you call if you have a patient who is deteriorating. They could review the patient more than what the doctors can do sometimes. They are there 24 hours, but just make sure that if you are going to refer a patient to the CRT or the critical response team, make sure that you do all the monitoring because they will check on that. Like, is the patient passing urine? in how when was the last time the patient opened their bowels things like that you have to know all those things because they're gonna investigate further on the patient if if you don't know anything about your patient that's embarrassing isn't it (laughs) they will decide if the patient will go to itu or intensive care unit or they will talk to the doctors as well to guide them or to give them advice on what to do and then we have our bed manager or site nurse practitioner they're usually the ones who give you bed space if a patient needs to be admitted they handle a lot of different kind of problems if there's someone trying to leave the hospital without any permission it's like absconding they're usually involved with that any problem within the hospital they are involved so they have a lot of problems actually and i don't know how they do it but it's just a really stressful job i think anything that the nurse in charge cannot handle and manager is not there like especially during the night then they would call usually the site manager sometimes they could advise or sometimes they could be really rude but uh, probably because they have managed a lot of different heavy serious problems than the problem that you are raising to them so sometimes they would say oh just deal it with yourself because they have a lot of things to deal with and you know that's just how it is that's life 
And then there are the CNS or clinical nurse specialists. They are like the experts in the field that they are in. So for example, we have the orthopedic CNS or oncology CNS, things like that. They usually guide as well new nurses about how to do things or sometimes they could do assessments as well with the new nurses so they can be signed off. And sometimes if you have a question about certain things, then you can ask them if you see them around. Sometimes they know a lot of these things. They sometimes do trainings as well. I would want to be a CNS someday. <laughs> I want to be in the educational part of CNS, but I don't, I don't know. I'm scared. Anyway, we have as well different kind of nurses. So there's the pain team nurse. They're usually really experts with pain they see patients who have chronic pain who are admitted and there's the stoma nurses they go around especially those patients who just had a stoma so the stoma nurses will see them teach them how to change the stoma how to take care of their own stoma how to get supplies for the stoma and then there's the palliative nurses um, they usually see patients who are about to die and basically the principle here is people will eventually die and sometimes it's better to accept it and just let a person have a more peaceful and comfortable kind of dying. And that's why palliative nurses are there to help with these patients to give them guidance and support especially cancer patients i'm actually glad that here in the uk we have this kind of palliative nurses and there's discharge coordinators so basically we usually discharge a patient on our own as nurses but whenever it is a complicated or complex kind of discharge then we usually have a discharge coordinator that's when they come in one of the best example here is a patient going home but the patient is homeless so they usually, the discharge coordinators coordinate in the community setting where can they send this patient to or anything with a complicated social situation at home, then you can always talk to them and ask them as well. So yeah, that's the end of my list here, but it's just not limited to that. There's just a lot more. And I think that's it. I hope you learned something for today's episode and I hope you subscribe to my channel and I will see you on the next episode. Bye!